Are you looking to make your new Waveline Wave Puck Pump work with your Apex by Neptune Systems? Hello, this is Carlos from CoralView, welcoming you back to another episode of CBTV. In a previous video, we covered the basic fundamentals and features of the new Wave Puck Pump from Waveline. In this video, we will concentrate on connecting your Wave Puck to a third party controller by using an available 0 to 10 volt port. This makes the Wave Puck very versatile and almost universally compatible with most system controllers like the Apex by Neptune Systems or the Reef Angel, among others. I will show you how to program your Apex controller to take advantage of the advanced controllability of the Wave Puck. By the end of the video, you will know how to make the Wave Puck pulse, plus create simple night and day schedule of different flow patterns. This video will only cover configuration and programming of your Wave Puck with an Apex controller from Neptune Systems. It assumes that you already have a fully configured Apex controller and an active Apex Fusion connection, as well as a free variable speed port. You should be familiar with the creation of virtual and regular outlets. If you have not configured your Apex controller, a really good place to start is Neptune Systems website. They have an amazing website full of support articles, videos, as well as a support forum with a thriving community of experienced staff and fellow Apex users. You can visit them at www.neptunesystems.com. An aquarium controller and the connection cable are not included with the wave puck, but are required. To connect your wave puck to the system controller, you will need to plug in one end of a connection cable into the jack on the bottom of the wave puck controller and the opposite end into an available VS port on your Apex. You will also need to set the wave puck controller to VDM mode. You do this by pressing the center button on the controller once and then the up button once to switch your controller from mode 1 to mode 2. Now that we have the pump connected to our Apex, and the WavePuck controller in VDM mode, let's get started with Waveline WavePuck VDM Advanced Control. This is the Neptune Systems Apex Fusion interface. If you do not know how to access it, we recommend you head over to neptunesystems.com. They have a community forum that is monitored by their staff as well as fellow Apex users always happy to help. Before we start to configure our pump, we need to figure out which outlet our pump is connected to. The variable speed outlet on your Apex can control two pumps at the same time. To start, make note of which variable speed port you connected the cable to. If you connected your cable to variable speed port 1 and 2, then we know our pump is going to be controlled by either variable speed outlet 1 or outlet 2. With that in mind, we must first turn both outlets off. Now, turn variable speed outlet 1 on while you're also looking at the actual pump. If the wave puck does not respond, then turn variable speed outlet 1 off. Now, turn variable speed outlet 2 on. Make note of which outlet turns your pump on, as that will be the outlet we will be working with. For this video, our wave puck is running on variable speed outlet 1. Let's go ahead and turn the outlet off. Now, our next step is to create profiles. Profiles are flow patterns which tell the pump how to run. Then the flow patterns are called upon and activated by a schedule that tells the pump when to run different profiles. An example of a profile is to set a pump to pulse at 10 second intervals with a max speed of 100% and a minimum speed of 50%. There is no time of day or night specified on the profile. An example of a schedule that calls and activates a profile is to run that set profile between the hours of 12 noon and 2 p.m. In order to accomplish our goal of different flow patterns, we need to create multiple profiles and then schedule them to run at different times throughout the day. Before we proceed creating our profiles, you must remember that when using 0 to 10 volt ports, the wave puck will not run when the intensity is less than 15%. While you will be able to program the Apex with intensities below 15%, the pump itself will not be able to run. So, as you create your profiles, keep in mind not to program anything under 15% intensity. To create a profile, expand the top menu of your Fusion interface and then click on the Profile button. It is the one with the folder image icon. 
click on the first open profile and let's rename it to ramp underscore up. Under type, select ramp. This will allow us to gradually speed up the pump during the set time period. Let's set the ramp time to 60 minutes with a starting intensity of 30% and an end intensity of 80%. To save, click on the orange cloud icon located in the upper right hand corner of the page. What this profile will do is during the span of 60 minutes, the wave puck will gradually increase from 30% to 80% speed. Go back to the profile page by clicking on the folder icon located on your Fusion's top menu. Next, let's create a pulsing profile. Click on the next open profile and let's rename it to Pulse. Under control type, select Pump. To pulse is to oscillate. This means that you're going to run the pump for a length of time at one speed and immediately after, run the pump for a second length of time at a different speed. Then, repeat the pattern over and over again. Let's set the initial time to zero seconds so the profile starts immediately. Then, set the on time to 20 seconds and the off time to 10 seconds. This means that the pump will start by running one speed for 20 seconds and then immediately run a second speed for 10 seconds and then repeat again. Now, we need to set the intensities. Always remember that the minimum intensity corresponds to the off time and the maximum intensity corresponds to the on time. We want the pump to run for 20 seconds at 80% and then run for 10 seconds at 30%. Don't forget to save the profile. Now, for our third profile, we need to create a ramp down flow. Click on the next open profile and let's rename it to ramp underscore down. On the control type, select ramp. Let's set the ramp time to 60 minutes. Now, since we are ramping down, we need to set the start intensity to 80% and the end intensity to 30%. This means that during the span of an hour, the pump will gradually slow down from 80% to 30% speed. Be sure to save your work again. The fourth and final profile we need to create is our night flow. For our video schedule, we want the pump to run at a gentle 30% constant speed throughout the night. Take the next open profile and let's rename it to night. For our control type, let's select pump. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. In order to run the pump at a single constant speed, we need to fool the apex into thinking that the pump is pulsing, but both maximum and minimum speeds will be the same. Set the initial off time to zero, so the profile starts right away. Now, let's set the on and off times to 60 seconds both. Now, let's set the min and max intensities to 30% both. This means that the pump is going to run for 60 seconds at 30% and then 60 seconds at 30%, which is the same as running constant flow. Again, save, save, save. We now have created four different profiles or flow patterns that we can use on our schedule. If the time is between 0800 and 0900 hours, let's call and run ramp underscore up profile. Now, between 900 and 2100 hours, let's call and run the pulse profile. Between 2100 and 2200 hours, we want to run the ramp underscore down profile. And between 2200 and 0800 hours the next morning, let's run the night profile. Now, you may be asking, why am I using military time? The reason is simple. That's how the Apex is programmed. Apex does not use AM or PM. It uses military time. Now, before you go on and copy this code to your virtual speed outlet, there's a small catch. Apex does not execute a ramp profile when it's called by a time command. It can execute every other profile, but it won't execute a ramp type profile. So the line, if time 0800 to 0900 then ramp underscore up will not work correctly. For this reason, we need to use virtual outlets. Virtual on and off outlets are non-physical outlets that you can turn on and off either manually or via a set schedule. They are a virtual switch that combined with a physical outlet can create some really intricate patterns. Since we cannot use the time command line to call our ramp type profiles, we can call our virtual outlets in combination with the ramp profiles to accomplish the same thing. 
let's go ahead and create them as I know it will be a little bit easier to understand them once you see them in action. In this video, we are using Apex Fusion connecting to an Apex 2016 model. If you have the Apex Classic, Fusion will not allow you to create virtual outlets. Instead, you will need to create them using your Apex Display Module. For instructions on how to create a virtual outlet using the Apex Classic Display Module, please visit the link below. You will need to create two separate virtual outlets for this video. So, pause the video, create the two outlets, and then come back and join us. On your Apex Fusion main screen, expand the top menu and click on the Outlets icon. On the top right hand, click on the Outlet icon with a cloud on the background and select Add Virtual Outlet. Let's call our first outlet VRAMP underscore up and click OK to save. Go ahead and click on the refresh button located to the left of the virtual outlet icon. You will now see the VRAMP underscore up outlet and you can confirm its virtual status by looking at the value under the type column. Click on the outlet to configure it. Leave the name as is and select advanced under the control type. In the program window, type the following. First line, set off. Second line, if time 08 colon 00 to 09 colon 00, then on. What this means is that this virtual on and off outlet will be flipped on between the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Any other time, the outlet is off. Notice how we schedule the on time to match our original intended on time for a ramp up profile. Click on the cloud icon on the upper right hand corner to save and then click on the outlet icon on the apex menu bar to return to the outlet list page. Now we do the same thing for the ramp down profile. Click on the virtual outlet icon and then select add virtual outlet. Name it V ramp underscore down and then click OK to save. Click on the refresh button to update the list and then click on the newly created VRAMP underscore down outlet to configure it. Just like before, with the VRAMP up outlet, select advance under the control type and then type the following in the program window. First line, set off. Second line, if time 21 colon 00 to 22 colon 00, then on. This means that this virtual on and off outlet will be on between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. Any other time, the outlet is off. Again, the schedule for the VRAMP underscore down outlet matches our original intended on time for the RAMP underscore down profile. Don't forget to save your newly created virtual outlet. Now we can go ahead and create our final schedule where we put it all together and activate each profile at our selected times. Head back to the outlets list and now click on your variable speed port 1. This is the port we determined at the beginning of the video it control our wave puck. Let's rename it wave puck. On the control type, select advanced. Now in the program window, we can type our schedule. Line 1. If outlet v ramp underscore up equals on, then ramp underscore up. This means that if our virtual outlet called VRAMP up is on, then activate ramp up profile. Notice that we did not specify a time here as we already specified the time when we created the virtual outlet. We know for a fact that the only time virtual outlet VRAMP up will be on is between 0800 and 0900 hours. Line 2. If time 09 colon 00 to 22 colon 00, then pulse. Notice that in this case, we did not use a virtual outlet even though we're calling for a profile. The reason is because pulse is not a ramp type profile. Pulse is a pulse profile. We only use virtual outlets if we're trying to activate a ramp type profile. Line three. If outlet VRAMP underscore down equals on, then RAMP underscore down. This line means that when our virtual outlet VRAMP down is on, the program should execute the profile RAMP down. Again, we did not specify a time here because we already specified it when we created the virtual outlet. 
line 4, if time 22 colon 00, zero to 08 colon 00, zero, then night. This means that if the time is between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. the next morning, activate the profile call night. Last, we need to make sure that the pump turns off whenever we are feeding the tank. For this, we add a fifth line that reads, if feed A, 0, 0, 0, then off. This means that whenever we activate feed mode A, the pump will stop. Don't forget to save the configuration. Last thing to do is to turn the variable speed outlet from off to auto. Head back to your Apex Fusion main page and then find your WavePuck outlet and click on auto. Give it a few seconds and your pump will begin to execute your day schedule. Your pump will now ramp up from 30 to 80% from 8 to 9 a.m. Then it will pulse 20 seconds at 80% followed by 10 seconds at 30% from 9 a.m. till 9 p.m. It will ramp down from 80% to 30% from 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. And finally, it will run at 30% constant speed during the night from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning. We hope this video was helpful and you got a good understanding on how to control your new Waveline WavePuck via your Apex controller. Please use this information you learn as a base or a starting point and feel free to experiment and expand. Go ahead and create more profiles and have the pump change flow patterns multiple times a day. Your pump is now able to do things that it could not do before, so have fun with it. The sky's the limit. If you would like to learn more about the WavePuck Flow Pump, including detailed specs, beautiful high quality pictures, and replacement parts, head on over to CoralView.com. If you have any questions or issues with the product, don't hesitate to visit our support portal at CoralView.com forward slash support. Our friendly support agents are eager to help you with any questions or issues you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralViewAquariumProducts.